Good morning class, welcome to Roland MC 101 101. Today I will be teaching you how to make your first ever song on the Roland MC 101. I'll walk you through the interface, the workflow, how this thing is laid out, how to make it make sense, and how to make music with it and really get into making songs with it. So without any further ado, let's jump into the device. So to start things off, hit project to start a new project. You can either load an existing project that you've got saved, you can write a project, which is the save button essentially, and you can start a new project, which is what we're going to do here. So it's gonna take its time to think about it, and it's gonna load up a completely initialized project. By default, it sets track one to be a drum track and track two to be a tone track, and then we get to select whatever we want tracks three and four to be. So this is its initialized drum kit. and we're gonna switch that out. So there are a couple ways to do that right off the bat. First of all, you can click in this button. You're gonna be using this button a lot. So click in this button, go to preset for a preset kit. I'm just gonna choose all number. Let's say I want to just select that. Now I gotta hit this again to actually lock that in. If you don't do that and like go off to do something else, it'll just default back to whatever it was before because it hasn't locked it in yet. So make sure you actually press this to lock it in. And I can press this again to find a different one and then select it once again. I like this one less. We'll get back to that. Track two, very similar thing. This is an initialized tone track. So this is for melodic stuff. Go to preset. And in this case, they've actually got it separated out into folders. So you've got your bases, your leads, pads, so on and so forth. I'm select a poly key. And this is set to like a standard chromatic scale. I did that out of order, but you get the idea. I'm just gonna select a random patch. You can change that and I will get back to that in a little bit. So those are the main kinds of tracks that you will probably be using. So let's dive into how to record stuff and then how to start modifying stuff. And you can do that in whatever order you want, but I want to try to lay this out in a somewhat logical order. So the first thing that I typically do is I will hold shift and then record to double check that input quantize is turned on. It is because I like to record with quantization because I'm typically making dance music or trap. So quantized it is. And I'm also going to hold shift and hit this measure button right here. This will allow me to change a bunch of aspects about this clip and I'll get into clips in a second. What I want to do right now is set the step length to be higher. It's default is 16 steps. So one, two, three, four, 16. I can set that to be longer. So if I set it to 32, that's two bars of music. If I set it to 64, that's four bars of music and so on. So right now I'm gonna set it to 32, select that. Always press this button to select stuff basically and then to kind of exit out of that, hit the exit button. To get myself started, I'm going to program in a hi-hat. So I'm gonna hit sequence and this grid is basically your piano roll, kind of. It shows where notes are in time. So if I place a note here, it places a hi-hat at this moment in time. If I place a hi-hat here, you can kind of see visually how that works. So if I just do this, and I've got another measure of music, so I'll bump this forward and do the same thing right here. Also note, if you want to do a hi-hat roll, say right here, hold down sequence, press this button multiple times to get different sounds. So this is also gonna function as kind of my metronome. So now what I can do, and I can record that in. So now I've created a clip. So let me show you clips real quick. These, if you click the click button, are all clips. So these can all hold different patterns of notes, either drums or melodies. So if I select this one, I can click this to create a new clip. This guy, this one's blank. And so I can record in something else. So let me give that same hi-hat pattern. And I'm just gonna restrict this to one bar cause I'm not trying to get complicated here. So I'll let that ride for a little bit when I'm ready.
And that's how clips work. And I'll show you a more powerful version of this in a second here. Right now, this snare is super dinky. So I'm gonna switch it out. I'm gonna hit shift, select the pad, and I can browse either by preset stuff. So I can go E snare. They've got all their built-in snares just here for the loading. So I'll just select one. That's a little better. Or I've already gone ahead and loaded some samples on in the SD card. So if I hit shift and this again, I can go to wave file and I can audition my sounds by hitting the sound button. Now I've got a bunch of stuff loaded in here. In this case, I've put them in a somewhat alphabetical order. I'll just select this trap kick for now. That'll do. Okay, so real quick, let's go ahead and record in an open hi-hat as well. So that's a bit loud and a bit grating. In order to modify the sound that the pad contains, you hit shift and then pad like I showed you earlier. In order to change the quality of that sound, you hit shift and then sound and then select the pad you wanna modify. So this is pad four, pad four, and I can go to level and turn this down. And that will only turn down this one element. This one still stays pretty loud. I could also say pan it a bit. Maybe pan this guy a little bit this way. Basically, you can scroll through these and then to change that parameter, you click the button in, then you get access to this. And then what you wanna stop, you just press it to accept that change. And then you can continue scrolling. There's a lot of stuff in here. Note that if you wanna EQ stuff like I do here, you have to turn that EQ on first for it to even have any effect. And then I can like turn down my high gain. Same here. So now. And that should be good enough for now, just as a really basic pattern. So before I move on, let's go ahead and save this. So go to project, go to write, and then you can go back and forth, change these notes. So let's just call this new, oh no, wait, okay, wait. So let's just call this new, right project, hit okay. And let's record in some kind of melody. But first, let's change the scale here. So to do that, I would hit shift and then note. And then I've got a bunch of things that I can control about how these notes work. So I can change the octave, you can also do it with these buttons, but I'm about to make that kind of irrelevant. So let's navigate over to scale and I can change the scale to say a minor scale or a major scale, Dorian, all the modes, minor pentatonic, a uh, whole bunch of stuff. Let's do a harmonic minor. I'm just gonna play in a super basic little melody part just so you can get the idea. Let me double check that the quantization is on as it is. Let me extend this to 32 steps, AKA two bars long, and let's hit record. <laughs> Not the most interesting piece of music ever written, but hopefully you get the idea. I can also of course do chords. So maybe I will go down an octave. So it didn't get that first one and I messed that up. So let's edit that. Now, if there's someone who is more experienced who happens to be watching this, let me know if there's a quicker way to do this because this is the clunkiest thing about the 101 and I hate it. So let's edit that botched chord. So let's go to, I'm in note right now. So let's go to sequence and I can go through and see all this stuff. This right here is that first note. So I'm gonna select that and then go back to note to see which notes are active, which yes, there's still more of that chord. So go back to sequence, select this, go back to note, there's that chord. <laughs> Got rid of all of that by accident, but uh, hopefully you get the idea. I really hate the note edit thing on this device and it's one of my few remaining gripes about it. Other than that, I've really started to fall in love with this thing, but editing melodies that you've already recorded is a pain. And as far as I know, this kind of back and forth between sequence and note is just how they had to do it to cram 
that functionality into such a small device. So we'll roll with it. So let me record that first chord again. There we go, that'll be good enough for now. And I can continue to repeat this process for more tracks. So let's say go to another tone track and let's do something fun with this one. This is a fairly new feature at the time that I'm recording this. Let's click this in. Also, I want to note that you can also load in a WAV file as a tone track. So there's one sample that would demonstrate this quite nicely. Let that load. So that's not generated by the synth engine, that's an actual sample that I've loaded in on the SD card. And then let's start one more track. I'm not gonna go into looper tracks because I don't really use them much. Roland's got a video on how those work if you would like to use that. They're not a looper in the way that you're thinking, but you can load an audio file onto this and then just let it kind of play through. But let's start one more tone track and let's click this in and go to random. This is fun. Okay, so what I was just in the middle of before my camera ran out of storage was uh, selecting this to give me a random mono patch, and I can do this again. Which is pretty cool. I'm not sure how truly random it is. It may be that there's like a bank somewhere or they just have a pretty good system of like parameters to kind of guide the engine. But regardless, it's pretty sweet. So let me send this down another octave and just record. And maybe this, like it's cut off is a bit much. So I'm gonna select filter here. Ooh, that's even better. And also effects. This is how you send something to say reverb. Sound, this typically controls a default parameter of the synth. And different uh, patches will have different parameters that this sound part controls. And once again, I can go back and control cutoff. If you're in filter, it always controls the cutoff, period. I acknowledge that this is a bit of a mess, but just bear with me here. I'm not trying to make good music, I'm just trying to make good demonstration at the moment. I've got plenty of other actual good music on my channel if you're interested. So what I wanna do now is copy this patch over and maybe send it up an octave. So that's, for context, that's this one. So what I'm going to do, I'm in clip here. I'll hit shift and then effects, which is copy. Copy clip all, which is everything in the clip. I will tell it to be in T2, so track two, pattern two. Copy clip, okay. Now that's living in here. And I can modify this as I please. So I'll hit shift and this clip and I can modify elements about it. So for instance, I could change its transpose, send that up an octave. Okay, that's actually kinda tight. So let me show you how to do dramatic switch ups because as you can imagine, selecting a track and then selecting its clips. On an individual basis will get very clunky and really inhibit your jamming. That's what these banks are for. So let's say I like where this is at. I like this as a segment of a song. I will hold down clip, hold this down to store that scene. Cause there are a bunch of banks of scenes. That's another fairly new thing, but a scene is basically a section of a song. So this scene now is this. And let's hold this down. Just select this next scene. And this is kind of thrown together by default. So let me select some clips here. I like this double time drum part. Let's have it be this uh, octave down one just for context. Select this. That's a bit muddy and a bit messy, but you get the idea. I'll hold down clip again and store this scene. So now what I can do during a jam is use 
scenes for drastic changes in sounds. And also there is a way to switch out patterns across different clips. I'm not gonna go into that here, but that is something you can do and I'll link a video on how to do that. And then that can become even more powerful if you use scenes because then you're actually able to have dramatic song switch ups, which is really important to me. So real quick, let's go into the scatter. This can be a lot of fun. Kind of useless as is. So what I typically like to do is just select one element that scatter gets sent to, and then often I will modify it a bit to fit my own needs. So let's hold down shift, hit scatter, and scroll all the way to setting, and I can change its position to say track two. So now, not only will this get sent out to my computer when it's recording via USB, but it will only control track two. That sends it down an octave, but it's too fast. Especially that tape stop effect. So what I can also do is go back into the settings, go to scale, bring that down. Now it's half as fast. Now it's quite a bit more useful and a lot more musical in nature. That is the basics of how to make your first song on the Roland MC-101. From there you would want to go ahead and start more clips with more elements in them. Control filter movement. I typically like to like have faders jump up and down to mute or unmute stuff, but you can also control that by using clips and scenes. But that is the basics of how to use this and I'll link some further resources in the description. All right, that is it for today. Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to see more videos on making music on the Roland MC-101, you can click or tap up over here. And if you'd like to see some jams I've done with the device, you can click or tap down over here. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll be back with a new video in a little bit.